Okay guys, and yes, we did a pause. Uh, we did had a pause from the fad, as just expected. Um, I've done an analysis this morning, you know, um, every day, oh, sorry, not every day, every time that the fad comes in and we have a speech from the FMC. Um, I do the hard work, <laughs> let's say like that. I do the hard work and I read through the fat statement and I read and I listen to what the speech was about. And then I write these little reports here for you guys. So it makes your life much easier. You don't have to go through, but I still uh, believe that going through the whole video on the you know YouTube speech from, from Jerome Paul is always good. Um, and this is why I always highlight on my on my researches where you can go to uh, listen to what the the the, fat, the germ pool was saying. Um, so today, what I'm going to be doing is reading through basically this and having you a few insights. So sit down, relax, get some water, get some popcorn, and uh, give us a like. Thumbs up on this video because this is very valuable information. And if you have any questions, please comment below and share this video with your friends. Register to the webinar tonight because yes, we're going to have a webinar tonight from 8 to 9 p.m. And I want to see everyone there because this is going to be a very special one. And you only will know if you are there. All right, guys. Okay. So if you want to read with me, you can go to ACY website and go to learn and then go to market and you're going to be like uh, FOMC review on the stronger US dollar. This is the one I'm going to be reading with you guys. Okay, so take your notes and uh, yeah. All right, let's go. First, um, uh, the, the, the John Paul have addressed, addressed some um, several crucial points during the, during the interview because in the end they have the interview, but as well during his speech, he have addressed some very, very important and um, nice highlighting points, I would say. Um, he began by acknowledging that the benchmark interest rate is already in restrictive territory, okay? So what does that mean is basically 5.5% um, is already very restrictive and they're not willing, they, well, if they need, they will go, but if they don't need to, they won't go any further, okay? Um, and then it sets, basically when they say this, right, the, 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 the interest rate is already in restrictive um, territory, it basically sets the stage for the cushion on the, um, the, the delicate, I would say, part of the Fed right now, that is when we're gonna cut, okay? So this is what I say here, setting the stage for discussions on the delicate balance needed in monetary policy. Paul emphasized that the importance of caution in reducing policy restraint, underscoring the potential risk of reversing progress made in controlling inflation. I don't think this will happen, okay? But if he says that, anyways. So looking ahead, Paul expressed the view that it would likely be appropriate to initiate rate reductions later in the year. Okay, just pause here. So we had Powell saying that would be um, likely a year of cut for the Fed. Okay. So one thing here is I want to mention, but I will, I will you know, um, I will mention further down as well. I do have it here, but I'm going to tell it already is that if we look at this image here, we can see that this image on the top of this, it says 12 of July, 2024. And what is happening basically is that we did had uh, 20 of March, 24 as the first cut priced in, but we don't have any more, okay? So basically the market, the market is Moving forward, the cut expectations for the Fed because they were a little bit more hawkish towards um, towards the monetary policy committee that they had today. And when they are moving this, they are moving to June now. Okay, so the June will be the first cut. 
the market is expecting a cut of around 25 basis points or a little bit further, okay? Because 55.7% of the market, as you can see on the image, it is expecting a cut, all right? To around 475 to 5%. Um, this, this, is, this is sourced by the CMA, so just so you know. So very interesting what is actually happening out there right now, okay? All right, so this forward-looking um, perspective indicated that the Federal Reserve's readiness to adjust policies based on involving economic actions. Paul also hinted that the policy rate might have reached its peak, suggesting a potential shift in the central bank instance. That is what I've mentioned. Despite considering rate reductions, Paul emphasized that the, com the commitment to maintaining the current policy rate for an extended period of uh, extended period if necessary. Um, okay, so this is a very interesting um, one as well because um, he, he is willing to keep pausing for longer. Okay, he's willing to keep pausing for longer. So he's not willing to cut right now, but he's willing to pause for longer. So that's what it says. Despite considering rate reductions, he is considering rate reductions, so rate cuts, Paul did emphasize it, the commitment to maintaining the current policy rate for an extended period of time, okay, if necessary. This nuanced approach reflects a willingness to adapt to changing circumstances while avoiding premature or drastic policy adjustment. Paul conveyed confidence in the commitment's ability to achieve the inflation target, highlighting a shared belief among members that rate cuts would be appropriate. So yes, he do thinks that the rate cuts are appropriate already, but for that, as they say, they need to go closer to the inflation target to start to cut rates because so then they have asserting that inflation won't go um, higher again. Okay. While Paul acknowledged that the commit is not actively seeking weaker employment, so hey, they are not, all right, so they are not, they don't, they don't, sorry, they are not caring for lower, actively weaker employment, activities, activities, weaker employment. So if they, if they don't have a weaker employment, that's fine for them. Because what they are looking now, it's the inflation. Again, everything is coming back to the inflation, okay? So he noted the willingness to consider rate cuts in response to signs of economic weakening, okay? He tempered any optimism about the current economic state, cautioning against premature celebration and emphasizing that his move lending has not been achieved, has not been achieved. Right, so this um, soft lending rhetoric has not been achieved yet, and he actually says this to us. Is the central bank telling us that these have not been achieved? All right. Paul attributed a significant portion of the present economic growth to post-pandemic recovery, anticipating a more pronounced impact when these factors fade. That's okay. Addressing concerns about inflation. Okay, let's talk about inflation here now. Paul stated that any resurgence would be surprising now. Okay, so any higher inflation would be a little bit surprised. So we know already that higher inflation are not on the table. They are willing now. They do think right now we're only going to have decrease on inflation. Okay, so he said expectations for inflation to stabilize around 2% clarifying that the goal is not merely to hit 2% momentarily, but to maintain stability at that level, okay? In addition to these insights in monetary policy, Paul's comments on Fed swaps had a notable impact on market expectations. He suddenly reduced the changes of a rate cut in March, so that it, there it comes, contrary to some market speculations. Future traders responded by decreasing their bets on the Fed rate cuts in March following Paul's statements. This shift in expectations has reshaped the market landscape, 
with rate cuts from the Fed now anticipated from May based on the future interest rates priced. Okay, let me just check something. Okay, yeah, yeah, I was wrong, I was wrong. So come back to this image here. So we have May 1st and not June, okay? So we do have May, May 24, willing to cut 25 basis points and June cutting 25 basis points as well, okay? So sorry, I got it wrong. Now, everyone does get things wrong. Uh, these shifting expectations has shaped the market landscape with rate cuts from the Fed now anticipated from May based on future interest rate prices. The Fed swaps have effectively diminished the likelihood on March rate cuts to around 30%. Yes, that's correct. Marking a substantial change in the market sentiment. All right, there you have it. What do you think? I want to hear from you. Please put down in the comments. I want to listen. What do you guys have to say? Do you think this is bullish? Do you think this is bearish for the US dollar? What do you think is going to happen on the US economy? If you want to know this answer, then be ready for tonight, 8 to 9 p.m. on my webinar. I'm going to give you the answer. Is it going to be bullish for US dollar? Is it going to be bearish for US dollar? All right, guys, I see you tomorrow and I see you tonight, hopefully on the webinar. Give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Maybe he or she likes to trade and wants to know what's happening on the monetary um, landscape of the central banks. All right, have always good trading week ahead. Well, sorry, good day, day trading ahead. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.